I've been playing as your dreams because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next in my When the Credit Roll series. A series in which I only review a game once I've actually seen the credits roll. Just so maybe I kind of somewhat know what I'm talking about, possibly. So, As Your Dreams came out in 1997 in Japan and the following year in North America and Europe. And it was released on the PlayStation with a Game Boy Color version coming out a couple of years later. It was published and developed by Konami and it took me roughly 15 hours to complete which seems to have been a very quick completion as the average on sites like How Long To Beat seems to be more like 25 hours or more. Azure Dreams is, is an interesting game. It's very much a roguelike before roguelikes were a big thing. Uh, it, down down to the point where it's got the you move and everything else moves. Um, it's it's also got some monster collecting stuff in there, so it's a bit of a weird game, really. the The plot is quite simple. It, it's set in the town of Monsbyre. The town basically's entire focus is this massive monster tower, and many years ago, a guy named Guy <laughs> went into the tower and was never seen again. You're his son, Ko. And now that you've turned 15 yourself, you follow in Guy's footsteps and become a like monster hunter, tamer person that goes into the tower. And it's basically the whole goal of everyone in the town is to gather the riches from the tower and reach the top. Due to some events, you meet a familiar right outside the tower called Queen, or Quenny, however you want to say it. And he's a monster that can speak. Classic, classic stuff. He's, he's the Meowth of the game. Um, and basically you go on a quest to get to the top and try and find out what happened to your dad. There's a bunch of stuff that happens in the town, like you get to know a lot of the townsfolk and such, and their little stories. You can even date some of the girls. Um, but overall, it's it's almost entirely about the tower and that's it the story is really really simple and the big bad kind of comes out of nowhere <laughs> like not to spoil anything but he literally appears out of nowhere and goes i killed your dad and then a few minutes later you go and fight it that's it <laughs> uh and then you find out the entire reason that they were at the top of the tower and everything and it's yeah it all, all comes out of nowhere. But anyway, gameplay. So you start outside the town, and it's really simple. Basically, you've got this nice, it's like a surprisingly big town um, where everyone starts off thinking you're a bit of an idiot. <laughs> and it's got this cool feature as you go further through the game, they start to like you more and more. Um, you can also, after a while, start to build new parts to the town as people start to like you um, and they give you some kind of small side quest to collect things from the tower which makes them like you even more and basically a lot of the reason you're going to the tower is to get the gold to help rebuild the town like add things like a theater a racing track increase the size of the temple and all that sort of stuff like it's kind of a bit of a, a town building sim it's it's again it's very simple and it's mostly just pay the money and done with it there's also a couple of shops which were mostly useless because um, everything you get in the tower is better than what you can get in the shops. And other than that, you can talk to the townsfolk and you meet a few of the town's girls around your age and after a while you can begin to date them. And there's a whole rivalry between you and some of the other hunters around your age and stuff as well. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, it's all very simplistic but a bit of fun. And there's some quite funny bits involved in it. But as you go into the tower, there is a restriction. And that is you can only take five items. This includes the monsters you want to bring in with you. Oh, I suppose I should speak about the house. So your house has a room for keeping monsters. Um, as there's a weird mechanic. If you get a monster egg in the tower and hatch it in the tower, 
then it'll only stay with you during that run through the tower but if you hatch it at home it's no matter what happens you'll always have that monster so that's what your monster room's for your mum acts as a save point in a bank so you can kind of store your items with her and I read through a guide and they believe that the more of one item you have in your storage the more likely that item is to appear in the tower and that seemed to be a bit of engravement about that in the guide I, I couldn't really tell I, I suppose I didn't play it um, it's like the hundreds of hours that some people do into it but yeah so you can only take five items this usually involves a weapon a shield a monster and maybe some form of return item like the wind crystal the best return item so then yeah you run out of the town and into the tower the gameplay is very simple like i said it's a rogue it's a rogue game so you step and everything else takes a step and then you just go around looking for items and the floor up overall there's 40 floors apparently the game boy color version has an even bigger dungeon which sounds intense <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's 40 floors that you're trying to get through. And as you step around, eventually you'll meet up with monsters. And like I said, you can bring a sword and shield with you once you've got them. And you can use these to attack the enemy yourself. You also get monsters. The monsters, you have a collar. And later on you have two. Like you get a second one. So you can have two monsters out at a time. And these will, depending on how you've set them up, so you can set the AI of the monster, of your of your own monsters. And this can be, they can do nothing. They can just follow you. They can support you with their magic. So they all come with like a buffing magic of some sort. That's usually an elemental type. And they basically, as you attack, they cast on you and then you hit the enemy. Or they can attack the monsters themselves or they can attack aggressively. Um, if they the first level of attacking they tend to just use their physical attack and if you do aggressive they'll use a lot of their magic as well uh, a key thing to note though is the more they help you attack the more they use their magic powers the more they attack the more they move around their mp reduces and once the monster's mp runs out they uh, are no use anymore and they've got to survive 40 floors with you so it's a whole taking them like using them sparingly when you think you need them maybe not having them out all the same time maybe having more than one and maybe even hatching some of these you go like to make sure you don't run out of mp but yeah so the, the fighting the enemies is very simple you you attack your guys attack they hit you back and it's <laughs> that's it <laughs> um some of the enemies do have some magic spells of their own they might have distance attacks, which are, which are the most frustrating, <laughs> which means you tend to zigzag a lot to avoid them. But yeah, um, overall, once you see a monster on the map, usually they'll come after you. Sometimes they do miss you and go other ways and disappear, but most of the time they, they will hunt you down to the ends of the earth until you kill them. But yeah, so you're going through the floors, you're collecting items, and then inevitably you're gonna come across the traps there are a variety of them, simple things like blind, poison, and these can affect the monsters as well, like your monsters and the enemy monsters. So there are items you can get that let you see traps, and so you can plan to bait the enemy monsters onto the traps, which is kind of fun. Um, but the most... Imp so yeah, so that that's it. So you, you're collecting items, killing monsters, monsters give you xp if you buy yourself it all goes to you if you've got monsters out it's split between a lot of you this leads us to the progression system which is in this game is a bit interesting if you die you lose everything apart from any monsters you had with you that you'd hatched at home so the mon main way of progressing is obviously leveling up your monsters so they have the basic ones of you kill enemies they gain xp and gain levels some of them even evolve once they hit level 20 and there are other ways of strengthening them so you can fuse two monsters together and that might unlock a special feature and add it to the monster so 
I believe it was the cyclone monster. If you fuse that into something else, it reduces the MP usage by half, which is a fantastic skill. There are some that increase attack and all sorts. And it's a lot of trial and error to learn how to build the monster you want. The other way is, I never managed it myself, but you get these magic items, which allow you, you to use magic, like throw fireballs and stuff. Apparently, if these get to level 10, they can be used to give the monster a new spell. Each monster seems to have like two two spells, maybe three, um, that level up as well. You can also change the element of your monster, and there's kind of like an element triangle, wind, water, and fire. Um, and obviously one's strong against the other and weak against another one. Everyone knows how weapon triangles work. So yeah, so you, you raise your monster, you level it up, give it some spells, and then fuse it with another monster to give it the skill you want. And then you bring your buddy with you. The other way is your personal strength. Now, you always go back to level one. The monsters, your monsters keep their level, but you always go back to level one. So how do you get stronger? Well, that's your sword and shield. You get these like red pouches you find on the floor that give you red or blue sand. And blue sand increases the level of your shield. That gives it a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. And the red sand pluses your weapon. Now, you kind of just want to have, there's a, there's a couple of swords that don't get affected by something called the rust trap. The rust trap reduces that number. So you want to use the swords that don't get reduced by the rust. Same with the shield. I had a gold sword because they're really easy to find. They're kind of like the weakest sword to start with. They like do one down, like give you like a, a one to your damage. And the diamond shield, or in my case, the mirror shield. So the mirror shield for me is weaker than the diamond shield overall, unless, unless you buff it really far. But it can reflect magic, which I find to be quite useful. Uh, some enemies kill themselves because they reflect their own magic on themselves. And then once you get these to like 20, 30, 40, like plus 20, 30, 40, you can like one man a good chunk of the tower yourself, which obviously saves the MP for your monsters until they're far higher up on the, floor, on the higher floors. So yeah, overall, it's it's very much a rogue game. You go in, everything moves with you, the maps are random every time, the enemy placement's random every time, monster items are random every time, and you've got one goal, and that's to get to the top. That's it. And you will rinse and repeat this. So yeah, normally at this point I'd give like how the Metacritic views it, like how the, how the general critics view the game, but Metacritic in this case doesn't have a score for it. So I kind of went on to its Wikipedia article, which gave some of the results from the magazines at the time. At the time, it seems to have roughly received a fairly good score of around seven, seven out of ten, and that's yeah, yeah, that's that's to me that's kind of fair. I mean, it's it's obviously not the best game ever, but it's definitely not the worst. Um, my overall opinions are: I did enjoy the great game. The monster designs are quite interesting. Um, especially as you go further up. Some of the high level monsters are, are kind of cool. The story is very basic, but the gameplay loop, as can be with some rogues, is very, very repetitive. And I want you to be clear going into that. You'll be doing the same floors, albeit slightly different layout, fighting the same monsters a lot. Those first 20 odd floors, by the end of the game, are going to drive you insane because you'd have done them to death and it's it's that i think that just the lack of variety especially in the early game that brings it down just a little bit um so my final rating overall is for niche fans only mm -hmm.